Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome a very, very accomplished individual who has been a supersonic fighter pilot and astronaut turned Bollywood star, Mr. Yuri Suri from India. Yuri, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Ashutosh. Uh, Yuri uh, is a supersonic fighter pilot. He has been a wing commander in the Indian Air Force. He was the backup trainee astronaut for the Indo-Soviet space mission in 1984, which was a very, very high profile mission. And then he did an amazing pivot uh, and has be- he became an actor in theater and Bollywood. So Yuri, I'm going to talk to you about both your journey as uh, an Air Force and an astronaut, Air Force pilot and astronaut, and your journey in Bollywood. So let's start with talking about your incredible experience as being trained uh, as an astronaut. So uh, Ashutosh, uh, firstly, let let me set the record straight. Um, Hmm. I was not fully trained as an astronaut. I was the the standby trainee astronaut in the sense that, uh, you know, when we finally selected uh, people to get trained for the uh, space mission, Mm -hmm. uh, we started with 52 test pilots. Mm -hmm. uh, And that was narrowed down to four. Mm -hmm. Uh, Those four made two teams. One was the main team that got trained in the USSR. Correct. And the second team was the standby team, which comprised Mm -hmm. me and another one called uh, Mike Mittal. Okay. So both of us were told to stand by just in case something goes wrong uh, mm. in Russia. Then we'd be rushed to, uh, to you know, take their places okay. and uh, get further training. Mm. Now, there was one squadron leader and one wing commander in each team. I was mm. the squadron leader. So therefore, I was stand by to Rakesh Sharma. Mm. And Mike Mittal was stand by to Ravish Malhotra. Mm. Now, fortunately uh, for Ravish and uh, Rakesh, uh, both of them sailed through the training with without yeah. any mishaps, and uh, we never got a chance to get full training as an mm. as astronauts. Okay. However, we spent that one year doing the evaluations uh, and various other things that are connected to space flight, and uh, I did visit Moscow for a long time, mm. uh, and that was uh, the extent to which I got trained as an astronaut. Okay. Uh, which, it, which in itself was, was uh, absolutely thrilling because we underwent certain exercises and certain trainings that we don't do in the normal course of aviation. Mm. Like, for instance, high, very high acceleration that you encounter when you leave Earth orbit and stuff like that. So mm. all those things were brand new for us. Mm. And uh, they taught us a lot of things. Like, uh, for instance, when you get trained as an astronaut, there are three aspects to it. Mm. One, of course, is the physical aspect that you've got to be physically fit to be able to Correct. take all the vagaries of, of space. Mm. The second is the psychological aspect. Like, for instance, one of the exercises we did was we were shut up in a small room for three days and three nights just mm-hmm. by ourselves in isolation mm. Mm. without any external uh, inputs. The food was lying somewhere in a corner. It used to be replenished by somebody we don't mm. know. Mm. But for 72 hours, we, we were inside this little cabin wow. without any contact with the outside world. Mm. And they were closely monitoring all your uh, parameters, etc. And, you know, seeing how you were shaping mm. up. And those were also early days. If you remember now, uh, Yuri Gagarin went up in 1961. Correct. Now, starting from those days, today we've far advanced in space Absolutely. flight and uh, mm. technology. Mm. But then these are the basic things that we learn. And the third aspect, of course, is the te- technology. Correct. Wherein you are taught about the spacecraft and how to handle various emergencies mm. and stuff like that. Mm. So right. uh, having said that, uh, that's the extent of training that I did in the uh, astronaut field. Fascinating. But, you know, as someone who's one of the unique individuals who actually was picked up uh, to be a part of this India space program, uh, I'm sure you followed what's been happening in space. I'd love to get your perspective on how has the journey to space evolved over the years? Well, Ashutosh, you know, the first time uh, a man went up into space, things were very uncertain. They strapped him onto a rocket and sent him out. He needed one complete orbit of the Earth. 108 minutes, I think, is what Yuri Gagarin went around for and came back immediately. Uh, When he came back, 
uh, now this is an interesting fact. Yeah. He did not land on Earth along with his spacecraft. Mm -hmm. He actually ejected out of the aircraft and the spacecraft landed separately. Wow. Now this the Russians didn't admit till 1971. In 71 mm -hmm. only they let out this fact that Yuri Gagarin actually ejected from the spacecraft and landed. However, today, um, uh, well, in the interim, what happened was that, uh, you know, the space shuttle took off and landed along with all its uh, astronauts on a runway. Mm. Recovery procedures have changed. Space flight has changed in terms of extravehicular activity. People mm. get out of the, air, the, the spacecraft now. They venture out into open space with those cold temperatures of minus 455 odd degrees that they um, have in outer space. Mm. You have longer space flights. Now, I believe the, lo the longest a person has spent in space is 655 days or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, can you imagine, uh, compare that to the 108 minutes that Yuri Gagarin flew. Mm. So the duration of flight, the distance away from Earth's we're getting into higher and higher orbits. We're traveling onto Mars now. I mean, not, not a human right. being, but then soon I'm sure it won't uh, take very long, maybe another 30, 40, 50 years, and mm -hmm. people will be landing on Mars maybe. Absolutely. Using the moon as a, as a stage. Right. You know, in the sense, you go to the moon first, from there take off and go to Mars or whatever. Mm -hmm. Things are changing very rapidly as technology advances, and mm -hmm. technology is galloping, really. Absolutely. So, so the change in uh, uh, space flight is there for you to see. Mm, we don't know what's going to happen. Fascinating. But tell me, Yuri, uh, you know, for the common man, why does space fascinate humanity so much? Well, for one, it is the charm of the unknown. I mean, you okay. don't know what is there. And... Uh, uh, there are additional things like floating in space with mm. zero gravity and stuff. Mm. When you look at astronauts, you you wonder what kind of human beings are those men. Uh, okay. They're doing things which you can't even do in your dreams. Absolutely. Space flight is venturing into the unknown, mm. uh, which, which is why it's so fascinating for human beings. Mm. And do you see uh, space being commercialized as now Elon Musk is talking about or Richard Branson is talking about? Well, for sure. I mean, it is fascinating for us. It was fascinating for us to go to, yes. to England uh, mm. many, many years ago. Mm. And, uh, you know, it, it is now commercialized mm. in the sense everybody can go and everybody does go and enjoy themselves uh, in mm. countries abroad. Mm. Space is, is, a, is a brand new frontier where people would like to go and experience what's happening. Mm. And I'm seeing space being commercialized in the very near future. It's already happening. You know mm. that Elon Musk and yeah. you know, uh, Richard Branson has yeah. been up. And you know, so everybody's trying to get there and see what is this hula bulu all about. I know. What, you know? Well so said. it's going to be commercialized very soon, I think, to my mind. Right. It's not what very a great common. response. What a great response. You know, I spent eight years in aerospace uh, running Asia for two large American companies, but that is another subject. I'll talk to you some other time. Uh, you, you then decided to move from uh, being a fighter pilot and an astronaut or, or a future pot potential astronaut to Bollywood and you succeeded. Tell me about your journey as a star, but of a different kind. <laughs> Never been a star, uh, but but thank you so much for having said that. Uh, you know, my, my journey into space started uh, when I was an 11-year-old kid, mm -hmm. when Yuri Gagarin went up. Mm -hmm. And from those days, uh, I don't know, I've been dreaming of the fact that I'll one day be an astronaut. Mm -hmm. Now, since I uh, missed the opportunity, mm -hmm. missed the boat, I decided to take up another career option. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, in those days, uh, mainly officers from the defense services who retired used to do very cliched kind of jobs. Mm. Uh, not many people ventured out into acting, especially. Mm. Uh, some people started their businesses and stuff. I had no business acumen. I didn't really uh, care for a, a desk job to sit down somewhere and manage security or something like that. So I thought to myself that... Uh, well, I was a musician also when I was a kid. Uh, starting mm -hmm. from those days, I learned to play the guitar, etc. Mm -hmm. So I decided to get into the world of entertainment. And uh, 
I didn't know how to go about where to go. I didn't have any uncles in Bollywood or mm. whatever. Mm. So I started my life in the entertainment industry in radio. Okay. FM radio was just starting. Mm. So I uh, gathered some guts and I landed up for an audition where uh, there were these young 20, 21 year olds, you know, mm. uh, vying for the opportunity mm. trying to get on radio. Mm. Now, out of those two or three hundred people that had come there for the auditions, uh, fortunately, I, I got selected because mm -hmm. uh, of whatever the person saw in me. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I became one of the first few radio jocks in India and I did mm -hmm. radio for 10 years. Wow. And in the course of that time, I also mm -hmm. started doing theater. Mm -hmm. And because of uh, theater, I mm -hmm. got picked up by your namesake, Ashutosh Gawarikar. I'm forever thankful okay. to him. He was mm -hmm. making Jodha Akbar. Okay. And, and he offered me the character of uh, Behram Khan in that. Yeah, I remember that. Now, I uh, was not very sure of myself in the sense I didn't know how I was going to mm -hmm. be, uh, you know, on, in front of a camera and stuff like that. But I took on the thing and I said, okay, I will do it. Mm -hmm. And that's where my journey started in Bollywood. And uh, I haven't looked back since then. I've done 53 okay. movies and uh, yeah, so if you okay. call that success... Well, 53 movies is a huge number of uh, movies. And what would you say are some of the changes you had to make in your own outlook to work coming from a very highly disciplined life as an Air Force officer into what I believe is a very different life as a Bollywood star? You know, Ashutosh, the, the core values of work uh, never change. Right. The discipline that was... Uh, put into us during service the somehow that discipline has uh, has been a very core learning mm. uh, throughout my life mm. i think if you apply that to anything and everything that you do mm. uh, you will most likely not go wrong mm. so i didn't have to change very much of my own thinking and life uh, lifestyle in uh, in the entertainment industry mm -hmm. i applied the same values i was always on time I used to dress immaculately. I used to behave myself. I used to conduct myself with dignity. Mm. Uh, I think all these little things that I learned in the Air Force, uh, they carried me in good stead. Mm. Well said. And what would you say are some of your more memorable roles? And how do you prepare for some of these roles? I guess the most memorable role was my first role, which was... Uh, Behram Khan. Uh, Behram Khan and Jodha Akbar. And mm. how did I prepare for it? Uh, you'll be surprised. Uh, and it has very little connection with the role. But I read the Akbar Nama before I went in yeah. front of the camera for the first mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually went into the mind of uh, Behram Khan to try and think what was he all about. And mm. uh, he was not cruel. Mm. He was only trying to protect the kingdom. He was only trying to protect little Akbar for whom he was the mentor. Uh, so I, I got myself into that mold of, mm. you know, not being a cruel person at the same time being a very cruel person because he couldn't leave anybody. If he captured somebody, he had to kill him because mm. he was a potential threat forever in life. Mm. Mm. So I, I, I tried to read up all that I could about Behram Khan. I mm. tried to get into his mind. And that is how I portrayed that character. And it was appreciated by historians. It was appreciated by my director. Uh, thank God for that. But this is how I learned how to prepare for a role. Mm. And uh, one prepares like this by getting into the, you know, under the skin of that character that yeah. you learn all about him, like what kind of school could you have gone to? Mm. You know, uh, I mean, little, little things like this, which would influence uh, how he says a particular thing or... So that's how you prepare for a role. But I Jodha Akbar was, was my most memorable role. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, Bhairam Khan's role was tough, uh, if I can use the word, almost a dark role. Uh, how do you switch from that kind of a role to maybe a lighthearted role, which you may have done or, you know, some other kind of roles? You know, if I think back when, when I was uh, not an actor, mm -hmm. uh, it would probably be very difficult for me to switch from one, one mood to the other. Mm. But you're talking about uh, one role to the other. That takes a long time. There's a transition period of days mm. or months sometimes. Mm. 
but but I'm now very adept at uh, crying <laughs> and immediately starting to laugh. Uh, I can do it right in front of you right now. <laughs> amazing, amazing. So, these are learnings that you have. Uh, you know, from well said. Well said. Well said. So, have you also done uh, work on television? Yes, I have done about ten odd uh, serials. What you call them? Yeah. Which are some of these ones? Well, the most famous probably uh, when Twenty Four was made in Hindi. Yeah. So I had a key role in that. Uh, you know, Anil Kapoor had made uh, yeah. Twenty Four. I watched it. So I was uh, I was in Twenty Four, hmm. and my. Uh, latest one is a thing called Blood Brothers. It is on Z Z Network. Okay, I've done about ten of them. Uh, I did uh, Peshwa Baji Rao. I did Shivaji. Uh, mm. So yeah, I've been typecast uh, as one of those warriors who always climbs on top of a horse or an elephant <laughs> and starts to fight. So yeah, I've done a lot of those. I know, wonderful. But how how is it different preparing for a movie versus a long series? I guess the uh, it is essentially the same. The mm. character preparation is essentially the same. Mm. However, a long series is you need more stamina. Mm. You you've got to be that character for a longer time. You know you uh, now that is one place where it gets a little difficult to do two diverse roles, um, a dark role and a comic role at the mm. same time. Uh, so you've got to stay as that character for a longer period okay. because sometimes it takes months to to finish a series, mm. and you can't afford to get out of that character because the moment you do, it shows on on the screen. Mm. Uh, the preparation is different, therefore, because uh, you've got to constantly read up about the character. You've got to constantly remind yourself that you're that character, mm. and stay under that skin. Mm. Well said. So, a couple more questions uh, for you. Uh, how are ott platforms changing the world of entertainment everyone's now sitting and watching at home yeah, well thanks to covid uh, people got used to yeah. watching a lot of television a lot of screen time at home the one thing that ott has done is that it has given rise to so much more talent that mm -hmm. was uh, lying undiscovered mm. people didn't have the opportunity to uh, to act uh, earlier but now you find that there are so much hidden talent that has come up mm. i mean just see the amount of people who have made a name for themselves on ott platforms mm. it is i i see the future because mm. uh, uh, how much how, how much can you go to a movie hall and watch? You have 15 minutes at home, you switch on to something and you, you see a nice thing. Right. I mean, these are things that are now along with your, uh, you know, you carry them with you in your pocket on your mobile phone and you have 15 minutes somewhere, you just switch on to something and watch something nice. Mm -hmm. This really is the, is the future of uh, entertainment. Very interesting. Very interesting. So I have time for two more questions for you. Uh, my next question is... Uh, Based on all your amazing things that you've done in life, for our viewers and listeners, what would you say are three lessons you would want them to take away from our conversation? Ashutosh, number one is uh, that it's in life, it's never too late mm -hmm. to start learning something new. Okay. You know, be it... Uh, flying a fighter jet or be it learning the guitar or maybe uh, skydiving. Uh, I mean, I've done all these things, which is I have to tell you. Yeah. It's never too late in life to start learning anything new. As a matter of fact, you know, if you often ask yourself this question, when was the last time you did something for the first time? Mm. You'll find that life becomes a lot more interesting because on a daily basis, you're looking for something brand new to experience. Correct. Which makes it exciting. Mm. That is one lesson I think people should take away from yep. this conversation yep. of us. Mm. The second one, of course, is when you want to do something new, you've got to be able to believe yourself, you mm. know, in the sense that believe in yourself and say that, yes, I can do it. Mm -hmm. Now, the first time I went skydiving, I was 
kind of being an aviator, having been up to heights, and uh, I'm not scared of heights. Mm. But uh, that probably was the first time that I left an airplane uh, without the airplane wheels touching down. Mm. Mm. Uh, I have to jump out of an airplane, which was. Uh, but but then it's the belief in yourself that yeah. uh, that makes that enables you to do something and do it well, mm. a new thing. Mm. That is number two, and the num number three thing, of course, is to always uh, follow your dream. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever you dream of, uh, don't let your current situation, don't let your current environment stop you anywhere. Mm. Follow that dream. Mm. Get after it. See what you have to do to get to that dream mm. and get to it. Amazing. Amazing. That is the only satisfaction in life one can get. Amazing. And my last question to you, who or what inspires you to keep pushing yourself to do so many different amazing things. I guess feeling hungry when you feel hungry and you don't have a job, you do something new. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, fair oh. enough. Okay. So, uh, Yuri, on that note, uh, and your amazing advice of never too late to learn, believe in yourself, and follow your dream. Thank you so much for speaking to me. Thank you for talking to me about. You know, you're one of the few people I've spoken to who've done such amazing and diverse stuff from fighter pilot, a fighter pilot to a potential astronaut, to a guitar player, to a radio jockey, to a film uh, actor, to an OTT actor. My goodness. And, and don't be surprised if you very soon see me in a rock band, which oh, is my wonderful. ultimate aim. Well, we look out for you. I'll tell all my viewers and listeners to watch out for Yuri's series, Suri in a rock band as well. Thank you so much for speaking to me and good luck to you. It was a pleasure speaking with you, Ashutosh. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for listening to The Brand Called You videocast and podcast. A platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.